Good morning everybody, Dr. Brace here for Facial Plastics Friday. Today I'm going to finish off our little mini series on facelifts and talk about adjuncts um, to facelift surgery or things that we do with a facelift to um, just optimize the result. So if you go back through the stories in this series, you'll see that we've talked about the scar, we've talked about when the scar goes around the ear, when it goes under the chin, what the SMAS is, what a deep plane facelift is. Now I just want to touch on the adjuncts. And so in facelift surgery, the things that we often add to the surgery to help with the face, the jaw, and the neck would be liposuction, number one. And so under the jawline here, here, and underneath here, if someone doesn't need a full submentoplasty where we're cutting out that um, extra fat tissue, deep fat tissue here, oftentimes what we'll do is some liposuction with some micro cannulas. And so we can help define the jawline, define this area in the submentum by removing some of the fat that's between the platysma muscle and the skin. This would particularly be for somebody who has a little bit of extra weight but whose weight is stable and they don't think they're going to be losing uh, any weight in the near future it can help contour uh, the neck and give a better result by doing that liposuction so that's number one number two the thing we often will we'll think about talk about and possibly do will be the buckle fat and so if you have congenital fullness right here in this area off to the sides of the corner of your mouth lifting the skin in the smas will lift the layers of tissue that are above the buccal fat but the buccal fat lives in the cheek under the facial nerve and between the muscle on the inside of your cheek and so it doesn't really move with a deep plane facelift it's in a plane that we're not pulling on and if you have congenitally kind of pudgy cheeks here and you want to taper this then removing the buccal fat can help streamline and contour this area of your face where the facelift won't do that it's a pretty simple procedure. You can do it through the facelift incision and access the fat directly, or you can do it through an incision in the mouth. It's something that can be done before surgery or before a facelift surgery or after a facelift surgery, but often it's done during the time of surgery to help with that. Not everybody is a great candidate for buccal fat. We see lots of people who call the office and want a buccal fat reduction that we we refuse and say, no, you're not a good candidate because if you don't have excessive tissue here, then taking that tissue out can prematurely age your face. So if you're young and you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, and it's a fad right now to have the buccal fat removed, you have to be the right person for that to look good long-term. The other thing I wanted to add to uh, facelifts um, or talk about to, as an add-on to facelifts is CO2 laser. So during the surgery in a facelift, we're tightening this, tightening, repositioning, pulling up the smas and platysma. We're letting the skin follow, but without any tension, and the excess skin gets removed. But for fine little lines and for pigmentation and tone issues, CO2 laser resurfacing is a fantastic add-on that I'd say close to half of our patients do with their facelift surgery. It does add a little bit more healing to your surgery because you have raw skin afterwards. CO2 is an ablative laser, meaning we're removing skin, we're burning off uh, skin. It is a fractionated laser though, so it burns a little hole, saves a bridge, burns a little hole, and what it does is helps us tighten the skin itself without giving you a pulled look and resurface the skin so that you have nice, even tone. CO2 laser can be done again independently of a facelift surgery afterwards or beforehand, but if you're recovering from a facelift, it's often done just with the surgery itself. Where CO2 is really powerful on a facelift is the upper lip and the chin, around the mouth, this perioral area. A facelift pulls on the SMAS and repositions it, but the SMAS transitions at your nasolabial fold here to what we call type two SMAS around the lip, and it's very adherent to the muscles, and so this area does not improve with a facelift alone and that's where the power of co2 to help tighten the skin help remove the wrinkles in the upper lip it's very very effective at rejuvenating the perioral skin and the rest of the skin so that you have uh, the most optimal outcome after a facelift surgery the last thing i'll talk about as an adjunct to facelift surgery isn't something that we do during the time of surgery but it's something that you can do for maintenance of your facelift after surgery and so anytime about six months to a year after facelift surgery, profound radiofrequency microneedling is a great option to maintain your results. The facelift has repositioned and tightened the smas and platysma. It's removed the excess skin, but again, you only look as good as your skin health is and profound is 
radio frequency energy through bipolar needles to stimulate collagen production, elastin production, and hyaluronic acid. And so it will hydrate your skin, thicken your skin, and help tighten your skin. And going forward after a facelift surgery, when you've removed the redundancy, it can be your maintenance strategy every four or five years to help keep your skin in best, the best shape and the best health as possible. So those are the things that we add on to a facelift, buckle fat, liposuction, CO2 laser, and profound as maintenance. Send us to your facelift questions if you have any. Everybody have a great weekend, and don't forget about the time change on Sunday. Happy Facial Plastics Friday.